Many of you will have read by now that reality TV star Katie Price was arrested early Tuesday morning after crashing her car in West Sussex. She then pleaded guilty to all three charges of driving whilst disqualified, without insurance and above the prescribed limit. So in this video I'm going to talk about each of those three offences and what the typical punishments might be for such offences. But for obvious reasons I'm not going to talk about the Katie Price case, I'm going to talk very generally about these offences and how the court might approach a situation where there are several offences brought together, as defendants are very often charged with more than one offence at the same time. But first of all if you're new to me I'm a barrister who helps you understand law so please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. So if you are a regular viewer of my channel you will know that I often talk about the sentencing guidelines which helps the court to determine what level of punishment an offender should get. And this is broadly a two-step process. First of all determining the level of culpability and secondly determining the level of harm and all the while taking into account lots of different factors each of which might be detailed within the specific sentencing guidelines to help the court to determine what is an appropriate punishment. And as I'm going to talk about three separate offences here, there are going to be three separate sentencing guidelines. First of all, driving whilst disqualified is an offence under section 103 of the Road Traffic Act 1988. Driving a motor vehicle without insurance is an offence under section 143 of the 1988 Act. And finally, you will find the offence of driving or being in charge or attempting to drive a vehicle with alcohol concentration above the prescribed limit in section 5 of the Act. So let's take a look at each of those in turn. Each of these offences are triable summarily, which means they will only be heard in the Magistrates Court, and very often defendants are charged with more than one of these offences at the same time. And unless there is a very good reason or they arise out of distinctly different facts, they will all be tried and heard at the same time, meaning there will be one conviction on any given day because that conviction will encompass any of the offences that are charged at that time. So let's take each of those offences in turn and explain a little bit more about how these sentencing guidelines work. The Sentencing Council website is a public website that anybody can visit and download and read the sentencing guidelines. So let's take each of those in turn and explain a little bit about how those work. So beginning with the sentencing guidelines for driving whilst disqualified, you can see from this screenshot that the court is aiming to determine the offence category. There are three categories, category one meaning higher culpability and greater harm, whereas a category two would be higher culpability and lesser harm, or alternatively a lower culpability but greater harm. Category three would be lower culpability and lesser harm. So let's talk a little bit about what those mean. When looking at culpability, the court will consider that there is a higher degree if the defendant has been driving shortly after being disqualified. Similarly, if the vehicle the defendant was using was obtained during a period that he was disqualified. And the third principal way the court would look for higher culpability is if the defendant was driving for reward, in other words, some form of payment. Most other cases would indicate to the court a lower culpability when someone is driving whilst disqualified. The court will then turn to look at the level of harm demonstrated by the driving. Similarly, there will be some factors that the court considers of a greater significance, such as the distance driven, and the court will consider whether a long or short distance had been driven by the defendant. Secondly, as you might expect, the court will take into consideration the standard of driving. So bad driving or some kind of accident or collision is going to indicate a greater level of harm when driving whilst disqualified. And again, most other cases will indicate a lesser degree of harm. So taking the two together, the court will look at the level of culpability and the level of harm. Now remember going back to the three categories we had at the beginning, category one, two and three, and the court will mix and match the level of culpability and the level of harm to determine what category this offence sits within. There's also a useful note in the guidelines where if an offence does not sit squarely into one category or another, then individual factors require a degree of weighting before making an overall assessment and determining the appropriate offence category. So taking category two as an example, this would mean higher culpability coupled with lesser harm, or on the other hand, lower culpability, but a greater harm. Looking firstly at the culpability factors, and let's say the defendant had not been driving shortly after being disqualified and had not obtained a vehicle during a disqualification period. 
or wasn't driving for any kind of reward. But let's say that there was a collision, so there was some greater harm because that was evidence of bad driving. That would be one example where this would sit fairly squarely into a category two, because if none of the factors indicating higher culpability were present, then the court might have to find that as a lower culpability, whereas if there was clear evidence of very bad driving, such as a collision, then the court would most likely have to find this in a category two. Having determined an offence category, we then come down to step two, as you can see from the screenshot. This effectively tells the court what the starting point should be for this category for this particular offence and what the range should be. The range being everything from what should be the lowest penalty up to the most severe. And the starting point is the level of offence that the court should look at before considering any aggravating or mitigating factors. Aggravating making things worse for the defendant, mitigating being reasons why the defendant should receive a lesser penalty. So looking at the example of a category two, the court's starting point should be a high level community order, but has a range from anything from a medium level community order, which is a lower, up to a punishment of 12 weeks custody. In addition to which the court would look at a disqualification period. Now, as we're looking at category two for the purpose purposes of this example, and it is open to the court to impose a custodial sentence, the court must therefore consider what is referred to as the custody threshold. And the test as to whether the custody threshold has been passed is also covered in the guidelines. Essentially, it states that a custodial sentence must not be imposed unless the offence or combination of the offence and one or more offences associated with it was so serious that neither a fine alone nor a community sentence can be justified for the offence. In other words, when looking at this particular offence of driving whilst disqualified in this scenario with a category two, to pass the custody threshold, the court must consider that this offence and any other offence associated with it taken together were so serious that neither a fine alone nor a community sentence could be justified for the offence. And to read more about the custody threshold and the other elements that come into play, I've linked the sentencing guidelines in the description below. Looking briefly at factors that increase the seriousness in respect of this offence, the guidelines have a few examples. They include previous convictions having regard to the nature of the offence to which the conviction relates and its relevance to the current offence. In other words, is it the same offence or is it very similar in nature? Secondly, the time that has elapsed since that conviction. Factors that may reduce the seriousness include having no previous convictions or no relevant or recent convictions, being of good character and displaying exemplary conduct, having remorse for what has happened and several other factors. The court will then go on to consider whether the defendant has assisted the prosecution, provide a reduction for a guilty plea, and then apply what's known as the totality principle. This is where the offender is either already serving a sentence or if the court is sentencing the defendant for more than one offence at the same time. The court will then consider what additional orders it might make, such as compensation or what's known as ancillary orders, which includes a further disqualification, and the magistrates will provide their reasons. Looking briefly at the sentencing guidelines for no insurance, the court will apply a similar two-step process. Similarly, the court will determine one of three categories by way of assessing culpability and harm. And in doing so, we'll look at things such as whether the defendant has ever passed a test, given false details, driving various types of vehicles or for reward, or there is evidence of sustained uninsured use of a vehicle. Otherwise, it might indicate a lower culpability. Coming on to harm, the court will look at whether there was an accident where injury or damage was caused. But unlike driving whilst disqualified, driving with no insurance is dealt with by way of a fine, consideration of a disqualification period and penalty points. When looking at the guidelines for drink driving, the court broadly takes a view on the seriousness of the offence. And when doing so, the court considers the level of alcohol that has been measured either in breath, blood or urine and custodial sentences are reserved for the most serious of these offences. So many of you watching this may initially think that drink driving should be dealt with more severely than driving whilst disqualified. But effectively, when a defendant is driving whilst disqualified, 
The court has already determined that they have committed some offence serious enough to warrant a disqualification in the first place. And so in driving whilst disqualified, the defendant is essentially defying a punishment that has already been handed down by the court. So as you can see in this video, I haven't gone into a great deal of depth in any one of the relevant areas of the sentencing guidelines and already it is fairly complicated. So when a court is faced with multiple offences and trying to consider each of these offences together and then assess the custody threshold in any part of it that is relevant, you can probably see how this can very quickly get very complicated. Court may rarely be prepared to defer a sentence if there is a commitment from the defender to change for the better. That being the case, the court may impose certain conditions and defer the sentence to such a date when it will consider whether the defendant has carried out what he or she has committed to do to improve their lives. So I hope this video has helped you to understand how the court might approach such complicated scenarios. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful and remember, stay humble and subscribe.